just because you may personally feel as if you have nothing to hide, I think that potentially undermines what I would call our collective privacy. Meaning that you can think of privacy as something that's completely individual and only applies to you, but at the same time, society needs privacy. We don't function as a society without some sense of agreement over what is private and what is not. You think you have a moral responsibility to run a platform that protects our democracy? Yes or no? Congresswoman, yes. Uh, have users of Facebook who were caught up in the Cambridge Analytica uh, debacle been notified? Yes, we are starting to notify. It starts Facebook. with the launch of Facebook platform, which was 2007, 2008, pre-apps, pre-mobile era. And what Facebook platform enabled people to do was for third-party developers to create apps on Facebook. This is the era of Farmville and Words with Friends. Mark says what makes Facebook better than the rest online are its privacy features. First, you have to belong to one of its 40,000 approved networks. Second, only you control what is on your profile, and most importantly, who has access to it. And one of the things that Facebook did when they created Platform is they allowed third-party apps not only to access your data, they allowed these third-party apps to have access to all of your friends' profile information. So not just their names, not just their photos, but many of the same fields that apps could get about you. So what you like, the groups you belong to, if you filled out all of those different fields about what books you liked and music you like, and I think importantly political affiliation, apps could get access to all of that. Now they weren't supposed to keep that data forever and they weren't supposed to sell it. But what we saw was that Alexander Kogan at University of Cambridge, he created an app that people added to their profiles. They were paid in essence to do this and take a survey. And so he was able to collect data from the people who added the app to their profiles, their survey data from the survey they took, and then all of the information from all their friends. So he had something like 300,000 people add his app. He was able to get something like 70 million Facebook users' data from the original 300,000, and that's because he could get access to every single person on every individual app user's friend list. So from that, he had a very robust data set that he then took and sold to Cambridge Analytica. It wasn't illegal, but he definitely broke his agreement with Facebook. As a third-party developer, you're not allowed or you're not supposed to be able to do that. What is clear to me now is that I made a mistake in not appreciating how people would feel about us using their data. And for that, I'm deeply sorry. We thought collecting people's data like we did was completely normal, accepted, and that people whose data was being collected and transferred knew that it was regularly happening. So there's clearly a big consent issue there around the fact that I wouldn't know if you added this app to your profile necessarily, and that it had my data. But the other piece of it too, what Facebook has about us, the things we tell them, which is mostly what your profile data includes, is really rich. It's not just where I shopped, it's not only where I've gone, it's what I care about, it's what I'm thinking about in some cases. It's much more qualitative data. So Cambridge Analytica had that data, and then as we probably most of us know, they then used that to target people in the 2016 election. Over the course of my career, I have seen a number of challenges to our democracy. The Russian government's effort to interfere in our election is among the most serious. It kept bothering me. Is it really about privacy? Is it really about the fact that all those millions of users did not click I agree? Was it really about that? And I don't think it's about that because there is a huge information feast. Everybody's coming, everybody's eating, everybody's getting a piece, everybody's getting a share. We agree that everybody will do that. But then one day someone crashed our party and you know took a bite without asking. Is that what we really care about? I don't think so. I think what happened in the Cambridge Analytica story is a really good showcase for a problem that we're going to see more and more of. And that's the problem of manipulating people's choices without them being aware, based on the information collected about them. So we already know that information about us is being collected. We already know that this information is being analyzed to create a very specific, detailed profile of us. But the next part is beyond targeting products and services, is to understand how we think and to try to kind of mess with our brains in a way we don't even understand or know and just give us the feeling 
that we actually chose A over B when we didn't. When the choices were presented in a way that it was very, very likely, based on who we are, that we're going to go with A and not with B. This power to influence people's choices is not new. In the supermarket, the bakery is always located at the very far end of the store because they want to attract you in. You're going to smell those pastries. You're going to walk all the way in. And then on the way back, you might grab something. Also, the candies are always in the eye level of children, so they'll ask their parents. Also, tipping options. They uh, ran a study in uh, New York for New York taxis, and they found that they give three options for tipping. And most people chose the middle option because we, we always look for like something that is not risky, the extremes seem too extreme, so we go with the middle. But what is different about today is that the power to architect choice became personalized. Okay, it's not about general human weaknesses. It's about your own unique weaknesses. And we get to architect choice on an individual level. So if you respond well to fear-mongering messages, that's what we're going to show you. So psychologists studied the search engine manipulation effect, and they found that with undecided voters, they were able to change people's perspectives by, in the extremes, 80%, just by rearranging search results. Google can influence your choice very effectively. They've tested it. Google's algorithm is a, tr is a trade secret. We don't know what goes into the algorithm. All we know is that we get search results and we don't know if they're being manipulated or not. I give Google the credit that they do not do that, but they could. Jigsaw is a Google-owned think tank, and Jigsaw ran an experiment that turned into the redirect method that is still in use. The redirect method works like this. It identifies potential ISIS recruits, because when you search on Google, we can learn a lot from your searches. You're very interested in their work. You look for information about ISIS. And then after you're being identified as a potential recruit, Google will start showing you as sponsored content, playlists from YouTube with videos that counter ISIS propaganda. I could never condone the act of those who take the law into their own hands and kill civilians. It is wrong, simple. It, it illustrates the power to just redirect, to architect people's choices. And even though I think this is an example of a way to personally architect choice that is done responsibly, it could definitely turn into covert manipulation. And the Cambridge Analytica business model is exactly that. When you have a large number of different personality types and you target to those different personality types information based on what will be mostly effective, this is manipulation. People thought they're making a choice, but they didn't. And I think this is why people were so upset about Cambridge Analytica. This is, to me, is the greatest concern because once choice becomes illusionary, we are no longer autonomous human beings. And at this point, we are at a crucial risk to any democratic value we believe in. It's about the power, the power that all these companies and the government and everybody has just by collecting all this information about us and knowing us so damn well. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.